Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Democrats say President Trump's new offer on border security doesn't go nearly far enough. I'm Mark Liverman with the latest on the longest ever partial government shutdown, now in its fifth week. There were women's marches all over the nation and right here in Bozeman. I'm at Ayers Babin. Coming up, I'll let you know what they are marching for. Good morning, Southwest Montana, 531. Uh, meteorologist Matt Elwell joins us, and uh, we've got some uh, weather concerns out there for folks as they get ready to head out to the work week. Uh, main concerns, the possibility of slick roads, slushy roads, mm -hmm. and you look at Bozeman Pass, uh, Homestake Pass, and down the Gallatin Canyon, all dealing with some snow and ice on area roadways. Temperatures are not bad. We're talking low 30s, upper 20s, but cold enough that we could see some ice and slick spots on area roadways. We have some winter weather advice advisories out for the area. Uh, this mainly for the morning hours, so we do expect to see some scattered snow showers through the morning, maybe some blowing snow as you head into the afternoon. As snow continues to fall in the Bozeman area, the temperatures are going to hold into the 20s, a little lighter conditions in Butte, but still slick roads. We're going to break down your complete forecast, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Now 632, as we've been following, we are now in week five of the partial government shutdown. President Trump came out with a new offer over the weekend. However, Democrats says it doesn't go nearly far enough. CBS's Mark Liverman has the latest this morning from New York. President Trump's latest plan to end the partial government shutdown hasn't won over his critics. If he opens up the government, we'll discuss whatever he offers, but hostage taking should not work. The offer? Temporary protection for some immigrants here illegally in exchange for the border wall. This extension will give them access to work permits, social security numbers, and protection from deportation. Democrats say the president created the very problems he now wants to solve. It was effectively saying, look, I created a problem by taking away protections for dreamers. I created another problem by taking away protections for refugees. I'm willing to undo part of the damage temporarily that I have inflicted uh, to get my wall. Vice President Mike Pence defended the proposal, including from more conservative Republicans who described it as amnesty. This is uh, not amnesty. There's no pathway to citizenship. There's no, uh, you know, there, there's no, you know, permanent status here at all, which is what amnesty contemplates. The Senate is expected to vote on the bill tomorrow. Some Republicans admit it's just a starting point. Uh, the vote this week in the Senate is not to pass the bill. It is to open up and say, can we debate this? Can we amend it? Can we make changes? 800,000 federal employees aren't getting paid until the shutdown ends. The TSA said that its employees are calling out at more than double the usual rate due to, quote, financial limitations. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Also, a handful of airports have had to temporarily close screening areas to deal with the sick outs. Despite the issues, the TSA says 99.9% .9 of passengers waited less than 30 minutes on Saturday. Wow, job well done. Now, Sunday afternoon at about 2 p.m., there was an officer-involved shooting in Billings. According to Lieutenant Woolley of the Billings Police Department, two BPD officers were investigating a suspicious call, which resulted in a foot chase and exchange of gunfire with a 26-year-old shepherd man. The suspect died at the scene. Neither officer was injured in that exchange of gunfire. No additional information has been released so far, but Billings Police Chief St. John will be holding a news conference this morning at 10.30. And people marched across the nation on Saturday and also in Montana. There was no exception here as well. Yeah, for the third straight year, Gallatin and Park County residents marched in support of women. MTN's Medeiros Bab tells us what the theme of this year's march was and the issues women want to see addressed in the future. Equal rights, equal pay, and an equal voice. One thought races through Sharon Muldoon's mind as she stands next to her wife getting ready for the third annual Gallatin and Park County Women's March. That thought, equality for all. I think it's about everybody um, and uh, women are standing up and talking and speaking but we're speaking for everybody. The theme of this year's march down 8th Street was admire, inspire, and motivate, a phrase that meant a lot to many. I know it's really important to have uh, inspiration and role models in your life. The march ended at Montana Hall, where Bozeman High School freshman and member of the Crow Tribe, Florence Doyle, voiced a call to action. I want to encourage all the young women here, including myself, let's be on the lookout. Let's guard our minds and ignite our ambition. 
let's be careful we won't end up just watching videos about other young women warriors. Let's take up our protector's hearts and become the girls other people make videos about. That <laughs> Let's make our own DIYs with real solutions to real problems. Most importantly, let's find what matters in our world and protect it. Oh. The event continued with a handful of speakers, Chicks with Sticks drumming band, and a blessing. In Bozeman, Madeira's Bab, MTN News. Now all to keep things safe, parts of 8th Street were closed off during that march. And this week under the big sky, Megan Fisher found herself at the University of Montana studying, playing tennis, and living the college life. However, on her way back to Missoula following her freshman year and a summer coaching tennis, Megan's life would drastically change. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. I kind of split my growing up between a small town in Alberta known as Rocky Mountain House and a suburb of Chicago, Hinsdale. What drew me to sports was the camaraderie. Sports was an easy way to have a community, like have a tight group of people. And I liked the idea of working towards a goal together. Fundamentally what I liked was the training. Like I was never the star player. I liked chasing after uh, a goal that was always just out of reach. Through high school I played tennis, basketball, and softball. And then tennis really was my passion and I followed that into college. University of Montana presented that opportunity. It was the breath of fresh air that I needed after living in the city. Missoula was perfect for me at that time. I loved it. I loved the training. I loved where I was training. I loved what I got to do outside of school. And I loved school. It just, it was everything. I'd finished my freshman year of college. Went back to Chicago where I got to teach tennis with my best friend. We were going to drive out here to Missoula to sign a lease on an apartment. And um, yeah, so I guess what happened was there was a horrible car accident. I woke up from my coma, my eyes opened, and I managed to look down at my feet, and I realized that, you know, my feet didn't match anymore. I wanted to get back to my athletic self because that identity was something I felt comfortable with. So, like, if I could get back to sports in some capacity, I could find a team again, I could find a community, I could find myself again. And that started that journey. So I think I hold my breath the whole time. Megan Fisher is a physical therapist in Missoula and continues to pursue her athletic pursuits. For more on those stories, visit us at underthebigsky.com. We'll have more on her story coming up as we continue this series. That's very cool. Yep. What a bright young woman. Yep. Incredible. It is time for a break. In a moment, we head over the pond to get the latest on Brexit. No resolution in sight, and the faith in leadership is dwindling. But first, we're going to head to New York and check in with Diana Goladriga to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, dangerously cold temperatures grip the east and midwest after a deadly weekend storm. We're tracking how long the deep freeze will last. Plus, our interview with the first woman to publicly make accusations against R. Kelly, why she partly blames herself for what she says happened to her underage niece. We'll see you at 7.